Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Onhar. Joining us on today's episode, the Chief Analyst and Founder of the Collab Collective, my old Wayne House research colleague, Craig Durr. Welcome, Craig. Hello, Steve. How are you doing? Uh, absolutely great, uh, but not as good as you after being at Infocom for, for a week, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, uh, uh, just like me leaving Wayne House last year to go work under my own umbrella to talk about intelligent video and research around that. You're striking out on your own now, too. Tell us about Collab Collective and what you're tracking there. I have. It's an interesting name, right? The Collab Collective Insight Strategy. So I'm doing work where I've always loved to do work, which is the devices, the technologies, and solutions that enable workplace collaboration and communication. So um, I focus on what's taking place from a business-to-business -business point of view, from customer to business point of view, and even employee point of view. You can think of employee experience, customer experience, and experiences that take place in the work environments. Um, it's a lot of fun. I get to help bridge some of these really challenging use cases that we've been dealing with in the last three to four years. When you're covered in an area like that, no better place to be than Las Vegas this past week uh, <laughs> uh, for the Infocom trade show. Tell us a little bit about uh, yeah. some of the key takeaways. Uh, you, you spent almost a week in Vegas, my condolences, but I'm sure it was still a productive time <laughs> there from a collaboration learning perspective. Well, I have to tell you, so my voice, if it sounds muffled, it is not because I'm hitting all the casinos. That's not my, my style. It is because I'm talking to a lot of really interesting people here. Um, so if you don't know this particular conference, Infocom 2024 is a very um, uh, paramount North America pro AV conference. This has taken up two halls within the Las Vegas Convention Center. But in the last four to five years, a very important element's been developing within this pro AV community, and it's unified communications. They actually developed a track they call conferencing and collaboration. And what it is leaning into is this idea that ecosystems like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, WebEx, Google Meet are actually driving a lot of that pro AV installations that are taking place um, not only in the offices, but in town halls and all these large rooms. Um, it's a really great idea, these two worlds coming together. It's IT meaning AV. And we're seeing video coming uh, coming to the fore in the workplace in a big, big way. You've been able to talk to some pe uh, people about multi-camera solutions in the conference yeah. room. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's happening there. So I, I'm fortunate enough that this particular event, I get to host a couple of panels. Two of them were very timely that I did. Um, I should, let me rephrase that. I hosted two panels, both being very timely. The first one I had a chance to talk about was multi-cameras solutions in the conference rooms, demystifying it. So if you happen to be kind of watching what's taking place within these UC platforms, Microsoft Teams and Zoom, for, uh, for example, they are starting to enable multiple camera experiences in the same room, bringing it into the conferencing experience. Now, what's driving this? If you think about post-pandemic, um, one of the big areas that got built out when we're trying to get people back into the office or return to the office was these spaces that were for gathering people together, town halls, large conference rooms, um, divisible rooms. The idea was we wanted to drive community to bring people back together. Now, there were still people that weren't in that space, so they had to enable these spaces to work with those ecosystems that they spent the last couple of years uh, investing in Microsoft Teams and Zoom. So multi-camera use cases have become more prevalent in everyday video conferencing. When people want to take um, a room like a town hall or a CEO update and bring that information to the broader team that's distributed these days. Um, one of those challenges is how do I do this? And we looked at it from two points of view. I love the terminology we use. We looked at cameras from the idea of outside in looking at the conference experience mounted on the wall or inside out. And by that, I mean, there's a new trend of center of table cameras that are coming to market these days. And I saw some great ones here. Polycom had one, Neat had one, um, Logitech had one as well too. And I had these people on this panel helping me understand when's the right use case for those outside in cameras, cameras mounted on the walls looking in or from that center of table experience inside out. 
Yeah, indeed. Cameras, cameras everywhere, uh, it, it seems like. And now you had another panel uh, that uh, strikes near and dear to my AI video heart, talking about uh, uh, the integration of artificial intelligence with meeting experiences. What, what exactly do yeah. you mean by that uh, when, when we yeah. think about that type of integration? I think, I mean, what is a conference these days without those two letters, right? A and I put next to each other. Um, we were trying to, again to help this pro av community help think about how they can leverage ai in the meeting room and office experience again some of these platforms that I'm, I'm very fortunate to be familiar with microsoft teams webex zoom they actually have a lot of ai built not only into the platform but what they pull from those devices as well too and it was difficult i think to try and create a framework for people to think about it do i think about it from the end user point of view do i think about it from the it administrator point of view so what we decided to do is think about these technologies to actually installing and trying to manage that. And we built out a framework talking about some foundational framework, basic AI implementation, and more advanced implementation. Um, for example, in that basic idea, we wanted to make sure that they, they just had the right hardware in place, intelligent cameras and microphones that can help attenuate sound, that can get the right angle of what's taking place in the conference room, um, those smart cameras, those smart microphones are foundational in terms of getting good data in. And you and I have talked about this. It's, it's data in, it's garbage in, garbage out, good data in, good data out. So that starts foundational. Um, then we had a chance to bring on some other things like what happens when you start bringing these AI agents in? The co-pilots Microsoft offers. Uh, Zoom has AI companion, WebEx has WebEx AI as well. And how do you have those actually help customize and augment the, the experience so you can focus on the business at hand. It was, it was a good conversation. Uh, and when we start thinking about AI, of course, the folks at Zoom are really embracing those two letters pretty aggressively. And you, before Infocom, you were at a analyst conference uh, put on by the Zoom folks. So where do you see them fitting I, into this whole discussion? So uh, Zoom hosted a group of analysts in New York for something they called Zoom Perspectives. Um, I really like the Zoom team because they're, they still have that energy, that vibrance that they that got them through the craziness of the pandemic. Being the pandemic darlings, it became a verb, right? Um, but now what's interesting about them is they have an accountability to Wall Street. Can they maintain a bit of uh, growth that they've been seeing over the last few years? Now they're not getting these quarter over quarter growths of 20, 30%. But they've done a good job with a solid strategy, still maintaining, I think it's something like 18 quarters of growth. This last one being about three to 4%. Um, and what you see in their strategy is they're, they're um, doubling down on some other elements of inner office communications. Contact center is becoming very important to them. Um, the other one is they talked about an investment they made in a company called Work Vivo, which is an employee experience. Think about how you and I might communicate and collaborate and stay in touch and feel in sync. Um, and of course, AI. And the, their approach is they're looking to take their AI technology and infuse it across the portfolio. And interestingly enough, for their core suite of products, meetings, chat, calling, they don't charge extra for AI. For them, they think it's an enabler of just new workplace experiences and use cases. And they wanna, as long as you have the, the, the paid for Zoom One license, they um, it, it's included in that as well too. So um, they're, a little bit disruptive in that model and how they're trying to do it as well. Now, even when we worked uh, together back at Wayne House, our coverage areas have always been pretty complimentary. I've been Mr. Video Guy, you've been uh, the collaboration guru, and uh, uh, so it's time for you to come here and give uh, me and the Intelligent Video Today audience uh, somewhat of a reality check. Uh, we, we, we see a nail and we want to hammer it with that video uh, all the time, right. saying that video is the answer to everything in the enterprise. And uh, right, uh, right. I, I respect uh, your viewpoint, though. Uh, uh, how important is video to the overall enterprise communications workflow, uh, to the whole knowledge management uh, uh, applications that are emerging? Uh, uh, where, where should we put ourselves in the pecking order in terms of our importance from a video perspective and video technologies within the enterprise. Like I, um, I would never say video is dead. It's near and dear to my heart. So it's not even because. Thank you, I, Craig. I that, we, you, we, we appreciate I love that. You, but 
I love video itself. This is interesting. So think about how you and I were operating five years ago. You were working with video as a medium of communications. That was, you know, a lot of times it was asynchronous, the work that you were doing, right? It was the idea that I might uh, take a video, store it. I might then broadcast it. I might have it on demand or something like that as well, too. And initially, I was working in that world where video was asynchronous communications. Let's hop on a video call. Uh, the, 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 the phone is, is not giving us enough information as well, too. Your world is actually having an influence which is taking place now in our world. And I think this is where the post-pandemic, how do we work in a new world environment comes together. And um, video is having a revival, maybe I should say, that's probably not the right word, but of being an element of asynchronous communications. And I wouldn't turn it away. So what am I talking about? You see these same platforms I just spoke about, again, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and uh, WebEx, and they're starting to integrate video as a form of quick message, quick Teams update. I mean, Envision, my team's distributed. Right now I have people working in another country, actually, people working on the East Coast. And the idea is, how can I give them a quick update that still feels personable, they can see my body language? And the idea that they would, you know, doing a video clip is, is a great idea now. Zoom's got integrated with their call clips. WebEx has another product as well, too, and, and, and Teams does this, too. And it's the idea, I can actually then take that and embed it right in that chat stream. I can embed it in a, an email, even, and continue that process. So video's not dead. Um, I think it's finding new use cases in our asynchronous world. Uh, well, uh, our audience is happy to hear that we're alive and well here in the, in, in the video tech sector. But, but, but think about this. I mean, even you and I, you've always had a very professional um, a, a way that you would present yourself on video, right? You, that is now becoming more mainstream. Think about the prosumer elements of content creation now influencing how people want to make sure they look good, sound good on video, right? This is no longer people taking time. And I mean, sure, people call in from their bedrooms or their home office or whatever it is, but people actually now take time to make sure I'm framed well. They make sure they have time that I'm heard. And the technology that's available on those webcams and those speaker phones and microphones is actually enabling that. So, um, you know, the NAB type broadcast market, you know, making sure you look good is, is having an influence on how we try and communicate. Well, one of the things I try to tell my clients is that uh, uh, video is not an island. It stands in conjunction with other applications like collaboration platforms. And it's important to understand where collaboration platforms are heading over time to understand the future of yep. video itself. So look in your crystal ball for, for us. Uh, every, everybody <laughs> talks about AI and the integration of different software applications. Uh, what substantial changes, if any, should we expect in the collaboration platform world as a result of AI integration? You know, um, great question. You know, I've, I think just like yourself, been talking about where are we going from promise to proof points in this? We have some good proof points now taking place. Um, the way that AI, I think, is successfully working today can help us understand how it might work tomorrow. Um, we have in the conferencing space AI that takes place in the cloud and even AI that takes place on the edge, in the devices, in those conference rooms or on those cameras, for example. If you and I were sitting in the same room, it would be a group experience. And that far, and you might say something, Steve, but that far end might know that it was Steve that said it or Craig that said that. AI now in those cameras can help use what's called attribution, identifying you by your face, by your voice, and then assigning that. So now we get to this cloud environment with that AI context, um, and it says, hey, Steve said that. Steve said, Craig, you have this action item. Go off and make sure you do that as well. So we've got these practical use cases right now, the, uh, the promise coming to proof points. And that leads us to where the future, I think, can go as well, too. Down the road, now you have intelligent data from a collaboration experience that now has who said what, who was present, and who's taking next items going forward. And what's really cool, um, it's just kind of hitting the consciousness right now is that AI entity can now work through the rest of the course of the day. So let's remind Craig that he had an action item along the way. Let's remind Steve that he had to check in on Craig on that action item. Come two days from now, let's remember that when Steve and Craig talk about it, that they wanted to pull in someone else, Paul, and Paul should now be part of this. So I think what we're going to start seeing is AI having its predictability based upon the information we put into these conferences, help us prepare 
help us complete tasks that we've had in the past too. Um, and, and what's gonna be really cool is when it starts feeding into other systems and opportunities as well too, right? Um, information that we can collect can help with uh, smart building environments, for example. It can help support, support things such as um, sustainability efforts. Um, it can help us support things about understanding employee wellness and, and happiness and well-being. Um, once that data, again, if it's good data, to your point, comes in, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Well, buddy, I miss uh, working shoulder to shoulder with you every day. Every time <laughs> I talk with you, I get a little bit smarter. So, so thanks so much for taking the time to, to visit us uh, at Intelligent Video today. Steve, I've got one more day in Vegas. Uh, I am, can't wait to get back. I know where you and I both live in Texas. It is hot, but I miss home. So thank you for having me, but um, I'm going to be on a plane soon enough. Well, we're looking forward to having you back in the Lone Star State soon enough. And uh, our thanks goes out to our audience watching today's episode. If you want to subscribe to additional episodes of Intelligent Video Today, just go to the YouTube link right there. Subscribe to the Intelligent Video Today YouTube channel, and you'll get notifications on future interviews of industry thought leaders like Craig Durham. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Vonderhaar. Thanks for your time.